Fine greetings to all. I am Shakti Prabha, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, deemed to be University, Chennai. So today's session, we will look into the topic Bipolar Junction Transistor. So the overview of today's session is, we will look into introduction to transistors, types of transistors and transistor construction, unbiased transistor and working principle of NPN and PNP transistor. So basically, transistor was developed by the scientist named Dr. Shockley along with the Bell Laboratory team members in the year 1951. The transistor is considered to be one of the main building block of all modern electronic systems. In communication system, it is the primary component in amplifier. So amplifier, it is nothing but a transistor which helps to increase the strength of the weak signal. Say for example, if I need to address a huge crowd, say it can be of an auditorium. So I may not be audible to the person who are sitting at the last row. So in such case, I have to make use of a microphone as well as a speaker. So the main criteria behind this is my voice signal, which is of very weak, can be amplified so that it can be audible to the persons at the last row. So this property is said to be amplification. So when you look into the transistor application, it is mainly used in all digital computers, in control systems, in satellites, mobile phones, as well as in all communication systems. So these are the types of transistors which has been displayed, wherein which it is a combination of uh, NPN as well as PNP transistors. So basically, the transistor has been broadly classified into two types. One is bipolar junction transistor and the another one is field effect transistor. So bipolar junction transistor, it is current conduction takes place with the help of both electrons as well as holes at the same time. Wherein which in field effect transistor, it is said to be a unipolar device. So unipolar in the sense current conduction takes place either with the help of electrons or with the help of holes, but not both at the same time. So that's what when you look into the classification of field effect transistor, we could able to find N-channel JFET, P-channel JFET, same way N-channel MOSFET and P-channel MOSFET. Wherein which, say for example, when you consider an N-channel, electrons are involved in the current conduction process. But whereas when you look into BJT, it is not N-channel, wherein which both majority carrier as well as minority carrier, whether it can be of an electrons or holes, both are involved in the process. And in addition to this, the bipolar junction transistor, when you make a comparison with the field effect transistor, it is said to be a current control device. And uh, field effect transistor, it is said to be a voltage control device. And apart from this, when you find about the features of this BJT, when it has been compared with field effect transistor, FET seems to be very less noisy than BJT and FET requires less space. So the space occupied by the field effect transistor seems to be less as well as it is it can able to withstand a very high temperature. So today's topic we will be completely dealing with the bipolar junction transistor in detail. So in transistor construction, the transistor or it has been comprised of three regions which is emitter, base and collector. When you look into the emitter, as the name indicates, it keeps on emitting the charge carriers, both electrons as well as holes. So hence it is said to be also as a source terminal. So apart from this, when you look into the doping level of the emitter region, it is said to be heavily doped. So you know very well, a doping, it is a process of adding impurity to the pure semiconductor. So when you increase the level of doping, obviously the electrical conductivity keeps on increasing. So here emitter is a heavily doped region and when coming to the second region which is base region, it has been uh, situated at middle portion wherein which in between emitter as well as the collector. So here it act as a pathway or it act as a channel between the emitter and the collector wherein which how much amount of charge carrier which has been emitted by the emitter region, it will be completely carried over through the base region. So when you look into the doping level of this base region, it seems to be very, very lightly doped. And the third region is said to be the collector region. So as the name indicates, it keeps on collecting all the charge carrier which has been emitted by the emitter region. 
So, when you look into the uh, location of this collector region, it has been located straight opposite to the emitter region. And over here, the doping level seems to be neither too heavy nor too light. So, it is said to be a moderate level of doping has been maintained in collector region. So, these are the three different types of regions which we name it to be the terminals of a bipolar junction transistor. So, this is the pictorial representation which shows about the bipolar junction transistor wherein which we have three terminals. One we have an emitter and then followed up with base and the collector. So, this is the symbolic representation wherein which you have the emitter, base as well as collector and in addition to that you can able to find an arrowhead. So, this arrowhead it indicates the flow of conventional current. So, always the flow of conventional current will be from positive terminal to negative terminal. So, coming to the classifications of BJT. So, bipolar junction transistor has been broadly classified into two types. One is NPN transistor and the another one is PNP transistor. So, when you take an NPN transistor here, current conduction takes place completely with the help of majority carrier. So, majority carrier here it seems to be the electrons. Same way when you consider a PNP transistor, current conduction takes place completely with the help of holes. And over here, when you look into the construction part of this bipolar junction transistor, say for example, if you want to construct a PNP transistor, you take an n-type semiconductor and to the n-type semiconductor, you sandwich the p-type material on both the sides. So, thereby you can able to construct a PNP transistor. Same process has been involved in the NPN transistor too. So, when you take a p-type semiconductor and you sandwich the opposite type of material wherein which you can able to construct a PNP as well as NPN transistor. So, when you look into the junctions of this bipolar junction transistor, we can able to find two junctions wherein which these junctions are named after the terminals which has been located. So, here we have two junctions, one we say it to be emitter based junction and the another one we say it to be the collector based junction. Yes. So, this is the symbolic representation which displays about both NPN as well as PNP transistor. So, in PNP transistor, you could able to see that the arrowhead has been flowing towards the transistor, wherein which in case of NPN transistor, you can able to find that the arrowhead, it comes out from the transistor. So, as I said you earlier, the arrowhead, it describes the flow of conventional current, always this flow of conventional current will be moved from P region towards the N region. And coming to the unbiased transistor. So, unbiased transistor can also be said as open circuited transistor. So, over here all the three terminals which is emitter, base and collector are left completely open without biasing. So, over here you can able to find a diagram wherein which the emitter, base as well as the collector has been left open. And the emitter region has been made up of n-type material and base region has been made up of p-type material and collector region is made up of n-type material. So, I have chosen a NPN transistor. And in this particular NPN transistor, you have two junctions wherein which emitter base junction and the another one is the collector base junction. So, here you are not applying any external battery supply to the particular transistor. So, how come it performs its processes? It observes the normal room temperature and it starts diffusing which means the majority carrier which has been available in the particular semiconductor, it tries to diffuse to the opposite region. Over here, you can able to find in emitter region, it has been made up of n-type material, same way collector region has been made up of n-type material. So, the majority carrier in n-type material is the electron. So, these electrons tries to diffuse from emitter region towards the base region and same way it happens across the collector region also. So, due to this diffusion of electrons, a uh, width will be created, I mean a depletion region will be created and this depletion region occurs across the junction which is emitter base junction as well as the collector base junction. So, when you analyze the width of this depletion region which has been created, you can able to find the width of the depletion region is not similar. Over here, when a depletion region has been created, the depletion region penetrates very less to the emitter region. The reason behind it is the emitter seems to be a heavily doped region and then the depletion region penetrates more into the base region compared with the emitter because you know that in base region the width seems to mean uh, the doping level seems to be very light and same way it happens in the collector base junction wherein which the depletion region penetrates more into the 
uh, base region as it is very lightly doped and the depletion region penetrates less into the collector region as it is moderately doped. So, when you compare both the depletion region, the width of the emitter base junction seems to be less when compared with the collector base junction. So, the entire uh, barrier potential of this unbiased transistor seems to be different based upon what type of material you choose for fabrication. If you choose a silicon material, it will be of around 0.7 volt and if you choose a germanium material, the barrier potential will be around 0.3 volt. So, in practice, we are not using this particular unbiased transistor as it leads to a poor conduction. Poor conduction in the sense with amplification property, it cannot able to amplify uh, the weak signal to a very long distance. So, it exhibits a poor amplification process thereby it is not used in practical purpose. So, for this reason, we move further it to the transistor biasing. So, transistor biasing basically you apply an external battery voltage to the transistor and you analyze the performance and characteristics of the transistor. So, over here let us initially start with the working principle of an NPN transistor. So, here I have chosen an NPN transistor wherein which the emitter as well as the collector has been made up of N type material and base region has been made up of P type material. And over here I have chosen two external power supply wherein which one of the power supply has been connected between emitter as well as the base and the other power supply has been connected between collector as well as the base. Over here you can able to find that when you start applying an external battery voltage across the left hand side of the circuit, the negative polarity of the battery is being connected towards the N type material which is nothing but the emitter region. So, when a negative terminal is being connected to the N type material, it is said to be that it works under forward active mode which we also call it to be forward biasing. So, once a forward biasing has been applied, probably the negative terminal keeps on exhibiting negative charge ions. So, this negative charge ions when it reaches the emitter region, you have in N type material the majority carrier to be electrons. So, this electrons will be completely repelled by the negative charge ions. So, as a result of this particular electrons starts moving from emitter to base region. So, once a flow of electron takes place, current conduction takes place. So, over here the current which has been generated in the emitter region, you call it to be the emitter current. And this free electrons starts moving from emitter region towards the base region. So, when it reaches the base region, probably the base region is made up of P type material, wherein which the holes are considered to be the majority carrier. So, this electrons starts combining with the holes and current gets generated. So, this current we call it to be the base current. So, here you have to make a point wherein which all the free electrons which has been moving from emitter region will never get compensated with the available holes which has been present in the base region. The reason is the width of the base region seems to be very less. So, obviously the uncompensated electrons try to move from base region towards the collector region. So, when it reaches the collector region, you can able to find that the collector region it has been made up of N type material. So, in N type material the majority carrier seems to be the electron. So, the electrons which has been moving from base region to collector region may get repelled due to this condition. So, for that process we will be making use of the another collector base power supply which is the external battery voltage wherein which you are connecting a positive terminal towards the collector region. So, from positive terminal you can able to find that positive charge ions will be generated. So, this positive charge ions when it reaches the collector junction, it attracts wherein which all the majority carrier available in the collector region will be moved towards this positive charge ion. So, thereby the leftover charge carriers will be the holes. So, the free electrons which has been moving from base region towards the collector region, it starts combining with the minority charge carrier and current conduction takes place and this current which has been generated we call it to be the collector current and this collector current it has been generated due to the help of majority as well as minority. So, this collector current is also said to be a reverse saturation current or we call it to be the injected current and when you represent it uh, mathematically we usually denote it with a not symbol say for example this collector current can be determined or denoted as I suffix C naught. 
So, if you want to calculate the total amount of transistor current which has been generated in this NPN transistor, it is emitter current is equal to collector current plus base current. So, which means that how much amount of charge carrier has been emitted by the emitter region, each and every amount of charge carrier has been completely collected by the collector region. So, this mathematical expression denotes the same. So, I suffix E is equal to IC plus IB. So, where in which here you can able to find a negative sign, this negative sign indicates that the flow of uh, current is due to the help of electrons. And the next working principle is about the PNP transistor. So, in PNP transistor, current conduction takes place with the help of holes. So, let us see how come it happens. So, initially I am taking a PNP transistor. So, this PNP transistor, it comprises of two junctions and uh, this PNP transistor, I am subjecting it to two external battery supply, wherein which the emitter region has been connected towards the uh, positive terminal of the battery and collector region has been connected towards the negative terminal of the battery. So, over here, this emitter region, it has been made up of a P-type of material. So, in P-type material, you know very well, the majority carrier seems to be the holes. So, when I apply a forward bias across this particular circuit, a uh, positive terminal will be connected towards the P-type material. So, it has been working under forward active mode. So, once this forward bias has been applied, the positive charge ion which has been emitted by the positive terminal of the battery, when it reaches the P-type material, as a result of this, all the holes starts moving from emitter region to the next region which is base region. So, as a result of this, a current has been generated which we call it to be the emitter current and once it starts moving from emitter to base, in base it has been made up of n type of material. So, in n type of material you have the majority carrier to be electrons. So, the holes which has been moving from P region it gets combined with the electrons which has been available in the base region and current will be generated. So, this current has been named after the region which is said to be the base current and now again when you start applying the external voltage probably the leftover uncompensated holes will be moved from base region to collector region as we have discussed earlier in the NPN transistor. The reason behind it is the width of the base region seems to be very less because the depletion region keeps on penetrating more into the base region. So, obviously the width of the base region seems to be very less. So, as a result of that all the majority carrier which is nothing but all the holes which has been moving from emitter region to base region will never find equal amount of charge carriers in the base region. So, the leftover or uncompensated holes again it starts moving from base region to the collector region. So, once it reaches the collector region probably the collector region has been connected with the negative terminal of the battery. So, in negative terminal of the battery once it has been con uh, connected across the collector region it has been made up of a P type of material. So, in P type you know that the majority carrier seems to be the holes. So, this holes will be attracted by the negative charge ions which has been emitted by the negative polarity. So, as a result of this the minority charge carrier will be left over. So, this minority charge carrier is nothing but the electrons. So, the holes which has been moving from the base region it gets combined with the minority charge carrier available in the collector region. So, as a result of this a current will be generated and this current will be named after the collector region. So, hence it is said to be the collector current and also it is said to be uh, injected current or leakage current or we also say it to be the reverse saturation current. So, mathematically it has been denoted by a not symbol. So, over here we have the transistor current equation which has been denoted as I e is equal to I suffix C plus I suffix B which is nothing but how much amount of charge carrier whether it can be of electrons or else it can be of holes. How much amount of charge carrier has been emitted by the emitter region? The same exact amount of charge carrier has been completely collected by the collector region. So, here it has been denoted with I suffix E equal to I suffix C plus I suffix B. So, in upcoming session, we will be looking into the further continuation of this bipolar junction transistor which is the transistor configuration. Thank you.